All right, so far we have generated the token in the backend, sent it to the frontend, and then stored that token in the browser. But we still are not ensuring only authenticated users are able to view the special events. So in this video, let's add a route guard to the special events route. A route guard is nothing but a piece of code that controls navigation to and from components. It can return true, in which case the normal execution continues, or return false, in which case the navigation is stopped. For our scenario, if a token is present in the browser, it means that the server has sent a token to the frontend which can only happen if the user registers or logs in. So the route guard will return true if the token is present in the browser and return false if the token is absent. Let's see how to implement this functionality. So go back to Visual Studio Code and first we are going to generate the route guard using the CLI. So in the terminal, navigate inside the Angular project, run the command ng g guard followed by name of the guard which is auth. So you can see the two files which get generated. Next what we are going to do is create a method in the auth service that returns if a token exists in the local storage or not. So open auth.service.ts and over here let's define the method. I'm going to call the method as logged in and this is going to return local storage dot get item of token. But we want a boolean value and not the token itself. So we can simply double negate the return statement. So this is always going to return either true or false. If the token exists in the browser, it's going to return true. If it is absent, it's going to return false. All right, now that we have the method, let's use it in the auth guard to control navigation. So open auth.guard.ts. And here, let's start making some changes. I'm going to leave the first line as it is. The second line, I'm going to change this to just router. So import can activate comma router from angular slash router. And we don't need the observable. I'm going to remove that as well. Instead, we are going to import the auth service. Now the auth guard is going to implement the can activate interface. So let's rewrite this can activate method. So first let me inject the services. So we are going to inject auth service for the logged in method. And we are also going to inject the router service to control navigation. Now let's define the can activate method. So can activate is going to return a boolean value true or false. Now if this dot auth service dot logged in we return true else we're going to navigate to the login view so this dot router dot navigate the link parameters array and then we are going to navigate to the login route and at the end return false and that's pretty much the route guard if the user is logged in, in other words, if the token is present, it returns true so they can continue navigating to the special events route. And if the user is not logged in, we redirect them to the login route. All right, the final step is to provide this route guard in the app module and then add it to the router module. So open app.module.ts and in the providers array, add the auth guard. And again, make sure to import it. Next, in the app routing module, we're going to add the can activate guard to the special events route. So over here, I'm going to add can activate, and this is going to be auth guard. Again, make sure to import it. So what is happening here is that when we try to navigate to the special events route, the can activate guard is executed. If it returns true, Navigation is allowed. 
If it returns false, however, navigation is restricted. So let's test it out in the browser. So go back to Chrome and over here, make sure that you don't have any token set in the local storage. Now, if we try to navigate to the special events route, you can see that we are not able to. It gets redirected back to login. So I'm gonna click on members again. You can see that we are not able to navigate to the special events route. We get redirected back to the login route. But if you log in though, so a at a.com, password a and login. Now that we have a token set, we are able to navigate to the special events route. I click on events, I click on members, you can see that we are able to navigate. I'm gonna click on events again, and I'm gonna clear this token, so delete selected item. And then now again, if I try to click on members, you can see that we are redirected back to login. You are not able to access the members route. So our authentication guard is working as expected. But there is a major flaw in how we are granting access to the special events. We are not verifying with the server if the token is a valid token. For example, I might not be a registered user, but I can easily create a token in the local storage. So let me go to the console and I can type local storage dot set item. I'm going to call the key as token and the value is going to be Vishwas. So I'm going to press enter. If I go back to application, you can see that we have set a token with the value Vishwas and now I can navigate to the special events view. You see, and keep in mind, I did not have to enter any user credentials. So, although the client side route guard is useful, it is not sufficient if we just check the existence of the token. We also have to verify the token in the backend to make sure it's valid. So in the next video, let's take a look at sending the stored token back to the server for verification.